I feel like a lot of people don't get into reading review copies because they think like it's really hard if they're not qualified enough to do it, but I'm a mess and I do it, so I feel like anyone can. Hi, I'm Alex, I'm 19, I read way too much high eye, and today we are going to talk about review copies, specifically how to get them. So just like brief background, because I'm going to try and keep this video very succinct, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm awful at doing, I'm sorry if it gets too long. I've been requesting and reviewing review copies since I think late May of last year, and since then have received just under 400. I think, which is more than one a day, which is a lot. And because I read so many review copies, I get a lot of questions like, how are you reading so many review copies? Where are they coming from? So I thought I'd make a video to say where they're coming from. Right off the bat, we're gonna start with like the very, very basics. Um, what is a review copy? Good question. So a review copy is basically just a copy of a book. It can be digital or it can be physical that you receive from either an author or a publisher or someone associated with said author or publisher with the assumption that you are going to give a review as like part of an exchange. Other terminology that I will use is the term advanced review copy, which is just a review copy that you get before the book comes out. Advanced review copies might not be the exact same as the final product because it still might be going through like stages of editing or maybe like plot things are being tweaked. The most famous difference I can think of is there was so much controversy when the the prom like the book based on the musical review copy came out that they changed a character's sexuality in the book because so many people got angry about it so things can still change between advanced review copies which is why I really like reading advanced review copies marks I think it's super cool to kind of think that you're getting like this exclusive look at something and when it gets to actual publishing like no one else is going to be getting that same exclusive look so in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to get digital review copies, mostly because I'm paranoid and don't like giving people my address. I'm sure there's other videos elsewhere for how to get physical review copies, but that scares me, so I don't do that. Okay, so if you're getting into reading or viewing review copies, you don't need like a big platform. You basically just need at least one platform where you review books, whether that be like Goodreads, Amazon, a review blog, um, Bookstagram, BookTok, BookTube, any of the book suffixes but some publishers are going to be looking for like specific things and normally they make that very very clear the two main websites that you probably heard about or if this is your first video about review copies that i'm going to tell you about are netgalley and edelweiss so i'm going to be talking about some pros and cons of both sites how they work and other general differences between the two. So on both sites you set up a profile where you talk about like your social medias, um, what kinds of books you like to review, the way you review books, your like statistics on how many people are following you on social medias is normally a very good thing to include, and just any other general information that you want publishers to know. From there you can navigate through the site by genre or by release date. Edelweiss has a few other things you can sort by that I'll be talking about in a sec when I talk more about Edelweiss specifically, and you can start requesting books you want to read. With NetGalley and Edelweiss, authors do not approach you directly through the sites, mostly. That's just most of the time. I'll talk about like exceptions to that later on. Instead, you basically go through their catalog and if you're like, I like this, you can request to read it. And then the publisher will look at your profile and may or may not grant your request and then you'll be sent a digital copy of the book that you can then read. Most digital copies are available as like PDFs as um, EPUB files that you can download or as Kindle books. Most of them are all three. Some of them are not available as Kindle books though, so it is good to have something you can read EPUBs on. So now let's talk about the differences. First off, the biggest difference you're going to notice is Edelweiss, for whatever reason, it's been a complaint for years if you look at people talking about it, is not a very user-friendly site to navigate, and a lot of that comes from Edelweiss kind of everyone's seen the same thing. Whether you're a publisher or you're a reviewer, it's like this very, there's so many features on Edelweiss and you do not need to use all of them. So my biggest tip for if you're using Edelweiss is just stick to the review copies tab. You don't have to really be exploring any of those other tabs if the main reason you're using the site is to find review copies. The other thing with Edelweiss is with NetGalley, if you're sorting through books, most people are obviously going to want to be looking at books within a certain genre. And NetGalley automatically, because of that, you can just like choose by genre or choose by like new books that are up there. With Edelweiss, I have so many categories and the way you're going to want to look for genres is you click on the categories drop down and you select the genres you want to look at. There's a huge list of things you have to go through to find the categories tab though and it doesn't call it genres, which I know people also have issues with because they're like, what does categories even mean? Because you're obviously looking to sort by genres. 
So now that we talked about one thing that NetGalley does better than Edelweiss, let's talk about one thing that Edelweiss does better than NetGalley. According to a lot of people, um, I like the NetGalley one more though. So basically on NetGalley, you write on your profile for everyone to see, have the statistics of the amount of review copies that you received and the amount of review copies that you actually sent out reviews for. Review copies start counting as soon as you're approved, not as soon as you download them. So if you request a bunch of things at once, which most people say that you should not do when you start a profile, then you're kind of in trouble because your statistics are going to look very bad. Now, I know that a big piece of advice that people have when using NetGalley is don't go through and request everything at once. I did that and it worked out fine for me, but that is because that was during the months, that was during summer. And if you watch my videos, I was reading 100 books a month in summer. So I could very easily stay on top of that. And it actually didn't help me in the long run because now even if I have like 20 books sitting there that I haven't read, my statistics still very, very good. Like I'm at a place now where I'll post reviews, like I'll forget. I used to be very, very manic about making sure I had reviews up as soon as I read a book. I'll post them like a week later and it doesn't really affect my statistic right now because I think I have like 300 reviews or just under 300 reviews that I've sent out on NetGalley. Edelweiss, I've heard that it goes both ways. I know some people claim that publishers cannot see your statistics, but I'm fairly sure if you look at the Edelweiss pages, it does say that publishers will be able to view statistics on how many books you've requested and how many you've received. I'm not sure if they can also review statistics on how many reviews you've actually sent out. But I think like as a general to be safe, you should still try to be on top of that. So I don't really get why people are like, it's so bad that NetGalley has that statistic when Edelweiss has a lot of the same statistics. Arguably, I'd say I like the NetGalley statistic more because I request everything because I have a massive fear of missing out. So I'm sure my Edelweiss statistics look awful if it shows like every single thing that I've requested. Another big difference between NetGalley and Edelweiss is with NetGalley, it's a lot easier to request reviews very, very quickly, um, which could be a pro or could be a con. Basically with NetGalley, if you like a book, you just click request and it'll ask you like, why are you requesting this? Did you like, I think it's the cover, um, the author, the description, have you heard about this book? They also have audiobooks now, so they'll ask like, are you a fan of the narrator? And you just check off those boxes and then they're like, sick, we will let the publisher know and get back to you. Whereas with Edelweiss, instead of checking off boxes, they ask you to specifically write in, like, why are you requesting this book? I personally normally write like a sentence about this is why I'm requesting the book. And then I put like all my social media stuff, like I have a copy and paste that I just put into all of them. But I know for me personally, that stresses me out more because like, like I said, I request basically everything I think I wouldn't hate in YA because I like to be pleasantly surprised by books and I don't know what my favorite genre of YA is. So it's very difficult to like try to come up with a different way of phrasing. I just really want to read your book, please. Another thing with that feature though, that's different between Edelweiss and NetGalley. With NetGalley, if you get, with NetGalley, if you're not approved for a book, like too bad, so sad. With Edelweiss, you can keep requesting multiple times. So at this point, you might be like, that sounds great, but that feedback ratio thing, that sounds pretty stressful. How am I supposed to keep a good feedback ratio? Because a lot of people, you don't want to like start off requesting like 10 books at a time. Because what if you get requested for all of them? Or what if you get requested for none of them? Either way, like that's not going to help your feedback ratio. Both NetGalley and Edelweiss have read now sections where all the books there, you do not have to request, you can automatically read them. I know there's a lot of like stigma and stuff surrounding read now sections on those sites because like it tends to be more self-published authors which sometimes self-published authors are incredible, but other times self-published authors should have gone through more editing before trying to self-publish. Um, but big publishers also post things in the Read Now sections. Like I'd say the book I got a review copy for that I was most excited about out of everything I've ever got a review copy for was um, The Silver Serpents, which is the second book in the Gilded Wolves trilogy, which was Read Now for a bit on NetGalley. And that's when I got it because I requested it on Edelweiss and they wouldn't give it to me until I did it in Read Now. So that's a really good section if you want to like right off the bat just be reading things there so your statistics already at a pretty good spot so having a few books in your queue isn't going to mess it up. That's a really good strategy to use. If you're using that strategy and you're a fairly fast reader, it's better to request one book at a time so you can have it read and reviewed without hurting your statistic. If you're a slower reader though, that's something you're really really excited about. Books do not stay on Read Now forever. So you might want to just request it and download it to be safe. One final comparison between NetGalley and Edelweiss that I personally noticed, and I know when I was looking in to get interview copies, a lot of other people seem to say too, is that it's easier to get approved on NetGalley. So because of that, I know a lot of people only use NetGalley, also because it's just an easier to navigate user interface. And that is definitely true for me. I've been approved for under 100 books on Edelweiss and over 300 books on NetGalley. So like, very different. But I also want to add like the caveat to that. 
that some publishers who are very, very lenient about approving on Edelweiss, like never approve me specifically from what I've seen on NetGalley for whatever reason. And same goes in the opposite direction. There are some publishers where at this point, if I see the book on NetGalley, I'll check the publisher and I'll be like, they're not gonna approve me here. And then I go on Edelweiss and I'll get approved within a few days. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because like there's certain amounts are supposed to get on each site or maybe some books are more popular on one site and less popular on the other. But there's some authors that you ba I basically get like auto as soon as I request it within a day or two, I find out I'm approved on one site who have not approved a single one of my requests on the other. So I would honestly advise just using both sites just to like optimize both the books that you're exposed to because some books aren't posted on both sites, although most of them are. Um, and also to just optimize the chance that you're actually going to get approved for books. With that in mind, we talked about the websites to use. What do we do when we're actually reviewing books? So both Edelweiss and NetGalley for like legal reasons, if you're posting on, I think it's websites that people can buy from directly. So I think it's Amazon and Barnes and Nobles are the two they mention. Um, they'll ask that you include like a statement, say just like a disclaimer. So people are very aware that you received this book for free and it wasn't an actual purchase and you received it in exchange for a review. Um, I don't have a uh, Amazon account because I don't spend enough money with Amazon. And I also don't use Barnes and Nobles because it's not in my region. So I don't post on either of those, but I still start all my reviews if I get a review copy with disclosing that it's a review copy, which I initially was doing just because it felt kind of like shady to not be saying you got a book for free with the express purpose of reviewing it and then reviewing it and like not letting anyone know that. Um, but I found that just from a wanting to get review copies perspective, it's a very good thing to do, especially if you're using sites like Goodreads, because what will happen then and what I've had happen then, what I know a lot of friends have had happen then is either there are some corporations that are like smaller invite only um, book review websites that will specifically go through Goodreads and will look for people who are like posting like, I review books, this is a review copy I got, because then they'll know you like review copies and they'll reach out to you and they'll ask you to join their sites and then you have more places you can be getting books from. Same goes for not so much big publishers I've seen, but small publishers and self-published authors will sometimes go through similar books to theirs, look for people who liked it, and if you say like, I got a review copy of it, they'll be like, cool, this person's already down with getting review copies, let's email them and see if we can send them one. One final thing I want to say about writing the actual reviews is general etiquette thing. So general etiquette for reading review copies is especially if it's an advanced review copy, don't put direct quotes. I paraphrase things, you can paraphrase things, but since it's an advanced copy and things might change, if you do do a direct quote, make it very clear that it is not a quote that might actually get into the final copy. Other etiquette things, try to make your review not be like one line. Most websites and publishers don't ask for certain word counts and stuff, um, but you know, it, I'd kind of feel crappy if I sent something out and I was like, here's this free thing, all I have to do is tell me whether or not you like it. And you just write like the sentence, I liked it, this was good. Etiquette from the other perspective, so from the person sending you the book, is just because you're getting a review copy in exchange for a review, it's in, supposed to be in exchange for an honest review, it is not supposed to be in exchange for a positive review, because at that point it kind of like cheapens the whole point of sending out books for review. So if a publisher reaches out to you after you post your thing and it's like, you didn't like our book and we gave it to you for free and that's not allowed, totally is. Both NetGalley and Edelweiss like emphasize that you're supposed to be giving honest reviews of things. Please don't be mean posting reviews. I'd also hope you're not being mean posting reviews for books that you just went out and purchased or got from the library. Um, but you also don't have to be overly nice. And if someone tells you otherwise, like, they're probably doing something shady. I personally wouldn't trust a book if the publisher was telling people to only post nice reviews about it. Okay, so this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching it. I hope it was helpful. I probably forgot a lot because like I said, I've only been reading review copies for like a little bit. So if I forgot something, please let people know down below. If you have more questions I didn't answer, also please let me know about those down below. Yeah, my biggest piece of advice with review copies is to just start requesting them because for some reason it seems like such a more daunting task and I think a lot of it is that people like don't want to be super open with how easy it is to get review copies because it's definitely an ego boost to be like, oh yes, I got this book before it came out um, just because like the publisher thought I was like this really influential figure, which it's not that at all, especially with a lot of like very big name publishers. You'd be surprised how generous they are with giving out review copies, and which makes sense because they have more resources to be giving out free copies of their books if you're like, I don't want to name specific names. So if you're like one of the big five. And yeah, happy reading. I will see you next Tuesday-ish. Bye.